You ready? How's it? How's it, my boy? <laughs> Marky, thanks for joining me, brother. Oh, it's good to be here again. Now, lo- not many people know we both. We They think we're actually Aussie battlers, but really we are South African uh, boots, eh? Yeah, we're diehard sappers. We're diehard sappers. Um, so, yeah, both of us born in South Africa. Uh, sappers turned into Aussie battlers. Um <laughs> Tell us a bit about uh, what age you moved from South Africa and, um, and, and what you remember of that experience coming to Australia. Yeah, so I moved to Australia when I was 10, putters from South Africa. I, I, I played all my junior days in Durban. That's where I grew up playing. Um, I played a lot of junior tennis with Lloyd Harris, um, who's a you know, very good professional tennis player now. So we, got a, we go way back, me and Lloyd. Um, but yes, moved to Australia when I was 10 um, and been training and playing in Melbourne ever since then. Um, and yeah, mainly moved to Australia for, for a better life, but also for better, um, you know, tennis, hopefully grow my, my tennis game and, and improve. Um, and yeah, my parents chose Melbourne, you know, uh, the, uh, the Aussie Opens in Melbourne. So, um, you know, that was a big, big reason to move to Melbourne. Um, but yeah, just been enjoying the journey so far, putters, um, especially with the Aussie summer coming up. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time for all us Aussie boys to have a crack. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah great spot to, to move to Melbourne. For yeah. Great choice by your parents. Um, my parents as well. I'm so happy they did move from South Africa. It's a, it's an unbelievable country to live in, an unbelievable yeah. sporting nation. Although South Africa had, did win the World Cup in the rugby, so yeah. they, they did, if they had exceeded anything, it is it is uh, in the rugby side. Yeah, yeah. it's in the rugby side. Um, cool. So, how old did you say you were? Sorry, when you moved? Here? I moved when I was ten. Ten. When I was yeah. ten. Cool. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, moved straight to Oz, already started playing in all the junior events. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been training at Melbourne Park ever since then. So it's been a, been a long time. Um, but yeah, Melbourne Park has, has improved a lot over the years. The NTC um, only was developed a few years after I arrived. So, so it's been a great um, training environment over the years. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable spot. So um, well, did you were you already wearing the hat before you came, or did that start in Australia? Ever since day one, but as I'll dig up some old photos. Since of me, day one, I'll dig up some old photos of me playing in South Africa in the junior junior days with my massive wristbands on, my bablat racket, that oldest hat you can you can see. Like it's got so much tears and no tear way. On it. I've always looked back at my old first hat. It was like a, a camping brand. It had a little lizard yep. on the front. Um, so, was, and then, then I moved to Australia, still playing with that same hat. Wow. Um, and then I finally started getting a new one and now, um, it's yeah. just stuck with me. It's stuck with you. Yeah, it's yeah. a signature. Yeah. So, yeah. so when your parents first, when your parents first put it on your head, were you, uh, were, obviously they put it on for some protection. Were you, was, were, did you fight it at all or did you like it from the start? I don't really recall having any issue with it, you know, but as, um, be a different story with my brother. He tried to wear it, but it didn't last very long with him. Um, yeah. It stayed with me, but with him, he got rid of it. Um, but yeah, only mainly for, for some protection. But as yeah. you know, my mom has uh, been really unlucky with uh, skin cancer. Yeah. So I have the same you know skin as her. So I'm really just trying to do my part to protect my neck, especially since the Aussie summer, the, the Aussie sun is, is so brutal. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't feel like I'm. The, I don't feel the same without the hat on either. I feel like it's just part of me now. Yeah, man, it is part of you. It's part of your character. I yeah. love it. Um, yeah, I'll just say that because I remember my dad used to make me when I used to go skateboarding in the street. I used to have a wide, we'll have to wear a wide brim hat, and I remember being the so. Hat, yeah. yeah, I was so pissed because I thought it was the least cool thing possible, <laughs> and he'd say you can only go skating if you wear this hat. Um, yeah, but yeah, we funny. we're uh, we're lucky to 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 um, enjoy a profession that's outside in the sun all the time. But being from Australia. You can cop it and you have to be careful of the sun, sun protection, yeah, eh? Like sun if, brutal, it's yeah. different. Like here in Japan, man, you know, you barely get burnt, you know, if you're uh, if you you can be sitting in the sun all day, it's just not as harsh. We just we get we get cooked down there. But it, but I, I I wouldn't trade that weather for anywhere else, hey. Definitely putters, yeah. I think the Aussie the Aussie sun is, is definitely a, a brutal one. Um, but you know, we wanna play tennis and we need to play in the sun, so yeah. that's just the way it is. How you been going here, playing in the um, playing in Japan in the cold weather? How do you, how do you, do you, like, uh, do you mind it? I haven't it? really had uh, any issue playing in the cold. Yes, it's a bit different. Um, you know, the, the, the conditions, the, you know, the balls are bouncing a bit lower. Maybe the rallies are being extended. So, yes, definitely different um, conditions here. Um, but I always enjoy playing in, in Japan. Part of this is the only time of the year we really get to, to play here. 
um, and I'm sure you've been enjoying your time here too. You know, the people are very friendly. The food is great. Um, the tournament organization has been great. So, yeah, enjoying our last week here in Japan. Let's make it a good one. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's finish strong. It's mm. a weird, it is a weird one when um, the last, like, oh, this is my first time in Japan. And as you say, Japan, it has been great and uh, yeah, on all fronts. The tournament's been good, especially yeah. that week at Kobe, like the crowds Unreal, there yeah. and the, the facility. And um, uh, everybody is potentially a little bit frazzled the last couple of weeks of the year it's a mm. tennis calendar is a long one so it's um diggers like you and i can try and capitalize on people potentially being tired you know yeah. and 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 really lock in and get some good results and work and it and it's funny but the hundred the hundred k event being the last oh, one of the four yeah. it's um yeah it's definitely uh yeah it's a it's a reward for for sticking around and enduring That's the last true. couple of weeks That's um true. yeah uh how do you go about then coming into a preseason? How, obviously, a tennis year being so long, mm. how much time do you ha have off? Or how much time will you have off from tennis? Or will you go straight into preseason? I mean, how we normally, go about December? I mean, normally, putters, we all like to have a bit of time off, you know? It's been, like you said, a long season. So normally, I'd like to have a bit of time off, which I only take five or six days heading up to Noosa for the first time. So I'm pumped to uh, head up there um, uh, early December. But taking then, the misses uh, up? Taking the, the misses up. So she'll be pumped <laughs> about that. Um, but yeah, I've been gone for so long this year. So it's the least I can do. Um, but there, yeah, then it's so a quick turnaround part. There's only two weeks of training um, until I head to Namia for the first, uh, yep. first event of the new season. Um, so yeah, not much, not much time to relax or, and not much time to prepare for the new season. But um, that's that's our decision. We've decided to come here and 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 you know try um, chase some more tournaments in the, the year. So, man, I'm just keen for the new season to roll around and and I wanna I wanna start to trying to make some more improvements with my ranking. Mm. Yeah, hell yeah, man. How many days will you have off? Do you think after this? How many days will you go without touching um, a racket? Well, I haven't tell I haven't told the misses yet, uh, putters, but I'll be looking for some sand dunes in Noosa. So please, <laughs> please give me some recommendations. Okay. I, I don't want to yeah. just rest the body for five yeah. days. When are you going up there? Nothing. Um, we're going from the 5th to the 11th of December. Okay, nice. So, that, so the 5th is like month, uh, Tuesday or something. The Tuesday, yeah, correct. And I'll come back the following Yeah, you got to, that's the thing, man. Even when you have time off, like rest the head a little bit from playing so much and, and have a bit of time off. Um, you got to keep moving the body, hey. You just, I just feel like that's when, that's when my body breaks. Yeah, I never get injured, but if I do, it's more, it's actually from stopping in a way. You want to keep, keep. And you moving. know, it's going to take you a few days to, you know, get the body, you know, back up and running again for the training. So I don't want to, I don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of light running and keep the body, uh, you know, prepared for the two weeks when I hit the ground running hard for those two. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, it's more about resting the mind, I think, yeah. uh, heading to Noosa, but the body is, is feeling good. Yeah. Great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to rest the mind a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll get you, give you some, um, sand dune recommendations. Yeah. The, sand dunes the steepest are, ones you know of. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best way I reckon, uh, doing some running preseason trainings. You don't have the hard impact for, and it's good for the knees and the hips and everything. And it's freaking hard to move. So 100%. it'll build those quadzillas up <laughs> ready for, uh, so I just booked my flights to New Year as well and my mum's actually going to come with me I've been trying to get her to come to one tournament Beautiful. so she's going to come um, which is yeah, you, you've never been there eh? no first no. time cool yeah, event I've heard yeah. good things so yeah be good and, and 100k and uh, yeah it's uh, it's um, it's weird not starting the year in Australia that first week but it's only a two hour flight and, uh, and then and then you know, what does your schedule look like after that you'll come back and hopefully play Australian Open main draw or you, you, you see how it goes I mean yeah putters, I'm, I'm, I'm locked Really focused on AO qualities, you know. I've really, yeah. I've really booked my flight from the Mir just in case. I want to, I want to head back and prepare straight away for the, for the qualities. Um, you know, I haven't um, had the greatest run over the last few years in, in the in the Aussie Open qualifying. So I want to try go deeper this year. Yeah. But if I get rewarded uh, or if I get lucky uh, with a with a main draw wild card, that's just an extra bonus. But uh, I'm not going to really be focused on that. There's plenty of other young guys. Um, who um, also, you know, deserve deserve the opportunity in the main draw. So it'll be whatever it is. Um, I, I don't mind. I'm, I'm ready to, to to start playing and and uh, have a better run in, in Aussie Open qualities if I have to. Mm. Sounds good, man. Yeah, keen as. Um, 
yeah, regard as you say, you just got to be you got to be ready for qualies, and uh, anything else will be a bonus. But um, yeah, it's it's good to come in with a with a bit of momentum, even though you, you know we have a, a break for a preseason and everything. You've been mm. you've been healthy for a while now, hey? When is the? Is he had a few injury problems uh, this time last year? I remember Correct. a bit earlier when you when when you played at Darwin and everything. The body was struggling a little Correct. bit there, so you've you've been uh, you feel body's feeling good. You've been been a good run of of luck this year. Yeah, so th- thankfully this year I've been able to stay on. Court with without any issues putters um you know i've had a full season which is great got my ranking back to where i wanted to be um so now hopefully next year i can start making some more strides um where's he ranking at right now 160 yeah something like that so hopefully i can have a good week here yeah um but uh yeah last year i was out for six months with an ankle issue um and then i was also um i didn't know at the time but i was recovering from a covid issue in, in Darwin last year, yeah. so my I don't know, but my 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 um my engine, my my cardio was just really took a hit. So I only found out afterwards that I was recovering from from COVID. So, but yeah. all good now. All, all good, good now. now. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. epic man. Um, so, uh, Marky, one of the things I've always admi- admired by uh, admired in you, um, and even though you're younger than me, I've, I've, uh, you have been. Um, somewhat of a role model to me with your ever since i met you and seen you as a little digger just your uh just that mentality of um of willing to uh put your balls on the line so to speak every match willing to compete the hardest wi- no, willing thanks, willing to uh yeah to, to leave it all out there and um it's been a, a massive um attribute of yours and uh so how is that being like if that being such a strength if i were to talk to somebody and mention you often you know people would um refer to you refer to that as one of your main traits mm-hmm. one of your main weapons when you think of uh you know and isn't that you're thinking of his serve and you, i feel like when you think of a Palmans, you think of his his mentality and his ability to lock in for for week after week or for l- long matches and um, how's, how do you think that mentality has come about? Is that a choice or has that been molded from coaches or from parents? Or how do you think that, that mentality has come about in you? Well, um, yeah, but, I, you know, I, tr- I try to do my best to show up mentally each week. You know, it's, it's, it's a long season, so it's not always the easiest thing. Um, I, I've, I've, you know, I've had a few slip-ups, but, you know, most of the time I try to be there when I can, present and, and you know, locked in. Um, but I don't know, but as I, I feel like I've, you know, ever since I moved to Australia, you know, I've come to Australia, really want to be a pro tennis player one day. So I feel like I really wanted, wanted a bad from, from day one. Um, I've had really great support from my parents, you know, they've invested everything into my tennis. So, you know, it's not just, you know, it's, it's a, you know, I get it from my, my mom and dad. They really want me to do well in tennis. So I feel like when I step onto the court, you know, I, I, I want it, I, I want to win. Um, and I want to go as far as I can in tennis, and, uh, and you know, in Australian Australian tennis, we've had some great great role models over the years. You know, Rusty, John Millman, yeah. Demon. Yeah. I mean, these guys, you know, they show us if you want to be a, a good tennis player, you have to tick that box with the mental side, and and you got to fight fight your balls off. So, you know, I've just I just take inspiration from those guys, um, and uh, I feel like if I can tick that box, then you know, it's, it's taking me take me a long way in, in, in tennis so you know I don't have the big booming serve or a, a big uh, big game so I got to find other ways to uh, to to grit and fight hard yeah buddy. yeah mm. yeah awesome Marky I think it's a case of just when you look back man when we're old and uh, looking back on our tennis careers you just I, I, I know one thing that motivates me um, in that mentality is just knowing how regretful I will be if I don't if I'm if I don't try my best day in day out or week in week out and obviously we all have our, our, our times when we let ourselves down I, I uh, you know I tanked a match this year in Puerto Rico just, <laughs> I was just fried just to play too much yeah. I was like it was um, which happens so rarely to me I, that's one thing I've always proud of uh, um, yeah been proud of as well I've always put in especially because um yeah, I know no one's. Uh, yeah, I, know, I also feel like if I'm stepping on the court, I'm, uh, I want to do my family proud and and that as well. But I, but at the end of the day, I know that I'm I'm only letting myself down. But it was funny. This one day, um, I was in Puerto Rico. I'd played like a couple, a lot of weeks in a row, maybe 14 weeks in, in a row. I think or I was something. there. Was that the? Was yeah, yeah, you were in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. So Ooh, I was playing single. Was yeah, that was brutal heat <laughs> was as well. Brutal heat. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I was just feeling fried, and I was. It was funny. Um. Dan and Tristan came to watch me and I was playing singles and I should have been pumped. I was pumped to get into singles. And um, 
I was. Uh, you were playing the doubles guy. I was playing, playing the Japanese Yasugi. guy. And no, I, I yeah, Asugi. Oh, I was there. And I was bloody. I was just. I just lost my head completely. <laughs> like just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to ki- to continually lock in. No, 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 I remember that Dana Tristan came to watch, and I was down. I was down uh, six three, and I was first game second, and it was juice. I've hit a what I, I've hit a ace tee. It's got called wide, and I was pissed. Then I've gone second serve rally lost a point. Then I'm break point down. And I've gone first serve slide T serve volley. <laughs> He's returned it, and I've got low for the forehand volley, and I just hit it over the side fence, like, <laughs> like full self sabotage. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you doing that for? Like, yeah. That's to lose serve in the second, you know. It does. That's it does. Funny. It happens to the best of us at times, you know. You could, no, but we do, uh, we do. Mm. but for the but for the most part, as I say, I um yeah, I, I love watching uh, how focused you are and how um I remember saying this to you when I spoke to you another time uh, my younger brother and I years ago when we were trained I'd say to him as a reference point to get him to try and lock in and be focused I'd say Pullman's mentality Pullman's <laughs> mentality like just be there every be, oh, be there every point yeah, thanks, show up yeah. so yeah keep going man keep keep um, definitely keep that trait with you because that, that'll uh, that's going to take you um, further than any weapon you know Thank you, yeah yeah uh, yeah um, uh, how many? Uh, how often? Uh, so you, you know, as tennis players, we train, whatever, five, six days a week. Depends mm. on the tournament, depends on the schedule, and everything. How many of those days are you waking up and it's actually what you want to be doing? And how many day? How many? Um, how many of those days uh, are you thinking? Okay, f- I'd rather um, be doing something else today, but this is my job, and I've got to get up and do it well. Or are, are you waking up and you're thinking, hell yeah, um, I've, I'm hitting tennis balls today? Yeah, I, th- I think part of I haven't really got to that stage yet um, where I don't really look forward to, to training because I just, I, just, I just have that top 100 goal in my mind yeah. that I just want to get to. So I know I'm not going to get there if I don't put in the work. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting because I think, I think everyone gets that stage in their career where maybe they don't want to wake up and, and put in the hard work. And I think that's when they know that it's maybe time to do something else. Yeah. I remember my, my old coach, uh, Peter Luchak, he said something very interesting to me, which I've never really forgotten about what he said. Cause obviously, you know, everyone knows Luch was a hardworking dude, fought for everything, achieved a lot in his career. Um, and he said to me, I said, Lou, so why did you stop at the end of your career? And he said, oh, I just did, I didn't like the, you know, the training on, on the court. I liked the, the off-court work, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't actually enjoy stepping out and, and training. So I was like, geez, I wonder if that, w- when that happens to me, then I think I'll know it's time to, to put him up. But, uh, but you know, but as I, I, don't, I, I love training. I love the off-court work. I love the, you know, just, just seeing the rewards when you're in the tournament, going deep in a challenger. That, that's what I strive for. Um, but uh, yeah, I train like all uh, all us other pros. You know, Monday to Saturday, Sunday, got to rest the body and, and do it all over again. Um, but uh, yeah, I think when you have that goal in, in mind, putters, like uh, I'm, I'm sure your goal is to be in the top hundred doubles. So that what that's what keeps you going. But for me, it's just the top hundred in the singles, and I, I want that bad. So that's all I see. Yeah, epic, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're feeling a little bit lazy one day, a little bit tired one day, you that the the overwhelming thought of being top 100 and that and that looming dream that just gets you fired that, up and going that gets me going yeah uh, especially when i've had a nice day off on sunday my body's fresh I, I take those first few days of the week with a full tank and i want to empty it without you know being stupid and <laughs> and, and in, injuring myself yeah. uh, i feel like my ankle injury stemmed from that what I think, I, overdoing it i think i overtrained um, I was going through, I think I lost eight or nine match, first round losses a couple of, two years ago. And I was like, man, I'm not training hard enough. So I'm going to start training more than what I was doing. Um, and I just think I just overtrained and, and cooked my ankle. I was running off court and doing four hours on court that day and then running. So it's like, like your body, body's not going to handle that. And my coach would tell me, Mark, you need to, you need to slow down. You, you, what you're doing is, is, is not right. Um, but I just, I thought that, I was losing matches because I wasn't training hard enough. Um, and then I was seeing my ass for six months. So I learned that lesson the hard way, putters. So for all the young players out there, you've got to remember that overtraining is a, it's a, it's a bad thing. You've got to be mindful of your load. 
um, because we want to be playing tennis. We wanna, don't want to be having an ankle issue and, and having to have surgery and, and seeing your butt for six months and yeah. restarting again. So that was an important lesson for me to learn putters um, and I'll definitely pass that on to yeah. whoever I coach in the, in the future. Yeah, sometimes it's not a, it can be if you're losing. I, I, I get you, I've been there where it's you just, you feel like, okay, well, it's obvious answer, I'm just not doing enough. But sometimes the case of um, just tweaking your methods a little bit, maybe you change the way you're training, not the hours you're training. You Train know? smarter. I've, yeah. I've noticed that with me. I've always, I've put a fair few hours in on court and I've noticed lately, obviously it's more specific on the double side of things, but I've just been training smarter and just being really thinking about where the things, the areas I'm lacking and what what specifics I need to get nitty gritty about. And because um, I would just hit endless rhythm, you know, and just grind, and grind, and grind. I noticed you've been so, doing some really good stuff, putters on the court. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and you never know when those that hard work pays off. Sometimes it might. I was joking to Romy Os a couple of weeks ago because yeah. he was watching me doing the knockoff follies every day, and I, and then I went out there. And uh, I was calling uh, it was the I was calling them the Jamie Murray nothing volley, right? Okay. And then I went and played. I, I, uh, I was telling Rom how many nothing volleys I was doing, and then I went and played my match. And he said, "How like how were you in the match?" And I said, mm. "I was horrendous at the nothing. I was still swinging at my volleys." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was joking him, saying, "Watch March next year, it'll pay <laughs> off. March next year." Like, and yeah, then that's nice, yeah. like it actually probably paid off last, last week, week. You know, already uh, I made the final. I had match points for the yeah, title, yeah, yeah. but so you never know. But you never know. Yeah, back to it's it's um yeah it's a case of yeah not uh, you can do your head in trying to just overtrain and overtrain and um, I don't think uh, more often than not people, kids will probably have the problem of needing to train more but there is definitely a fine part line. of a fine line of, of overtraining and, and just and training smart train you need to train smart and definitely and be specific and um, so how do you go about like um, uh, gym maintenance and everything on your body on the road but how, how much like it's obviously it's difficult to, to get uh, how, how often do you, uh, do you lift weights are you lifting weights on the road yeah I do putters especially if I lose first or second round you know if I have four or it's very rarely do I have five days until the next event starts so normally I have four days that'll be a time where I can maybe jump in the gym and do you know top up on the leg session you know do some squats some heavy lunges try you know get a bit of strength back in the legs um, but it's, 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 it's probably the toughest thing. You know, we play f four or five tournaments in a row, so you don't want to cook your body either, you know. Yeah. So if I have three days or two days, there's no way I'll jump in the gym. But um, if I have four or five days, then I'll definitely try to top up a little bit in the gym and do some legs. Um, but it's more about, you know, doing working on what you think you did wrong in your match a few days before and trying to improve for the, for, for the following week because... You know, every week's a new opportunity and you can you never know when, you know, like yourself, you can make a final challenge and that can change your year around. So you've got to yep. be ready to try to take your opportunities when they come. Yeah. Yeah, it's also a case of just getting, you've got to be able to get over your losses quickly, hey? Correct. Because ten, we have, that's one thing that we're lucky about in our sport. We have so many opportunities. Each if we week, can, yeah. yeah. each week, yeah. So how's it been this year, man? Um, or how, how long have you been travelling with Greg for as your coach? How long has Greg been coaching? So Greg was meant to start with me last year, but, yeah. but like I said, I had a I was out for six months. Um, so this has been the first year he's been able to travel with me, um, and yeah, we, I've definitely chucked him into the deep end a little bit. He's done eight months in a row with me from the start of the year till till pretty much now. Um, we had a little bit of a break during the Aussie Challenges just previously, but before that, we did the whole year. Um, and you know, things have been going well with him. It, it's nice to have someone off the court that's. Uh, that's also your buddy, you know. You know, when you're in the hotel room, you know, there's a lot of hours that just you just pass by and we're not doing anything. So it's nice to have him there to you know have a banter with and have some fun. Yeah. Um. But um. Also, I really like him being my corner when I'm playing matches. It's, it's great to to have someone there, you know, that's cheering for you. Um. And uh, yeah, he's been to all the Grand Slams with me this year, so it's been you know it's really cool experiencing, you know, playing traveling the world with him too. So there's been a lot of good things, um, and, and I'm sure he's enjoyed it, putters. And uh, yeah, next year we're going to be still teaming up, so we we ready to have another round two. Awesome. So it must be going well if you're going to continue. If you feel like mm. it's going well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going well. Mm. Yeah, great, man. Yeah, there's something about having a familiar face around you as well. It makes you that keeps the um, keeps the head a little bit. Um, in check, yeah, you know, even just yeah. here, like having uh, a couple of Australians around, um, it's it's, it's nice. nice. So yeah. if you, for you always, yeah, having your brother there, I can I can helps. I feel you. Yeah, 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 it helps big yeah. time. Yeah, and um, uh, 
Um, yeah, epic man. I'm gonna move on. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so Marky, you uh, 2020, you were nearing top hundred. I think you were at your career high 116 or something. Yeah, was it? Yeah, um, you had some injury speed bumps. Mm-hmm. Uh, firstly, I don't think the general public has an idea of what it takes to reach the top hundred. And secondly, people think that um, I mean, I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but being at 160 is bloody close. But it's also points wise it's still a bit away still you know? far away there's, there's, there's uh, the ranking system bottlenecks a lot right when and uh, yeah, yeah I've just been noticing that looking at the doubles points as well it's obviously it's it's kind of similar in that regard um, yeah what uh, um, what do you think you need to do to uh, well you mentioned that the, the top 100 goal lingers in your head regularly mm-hmm. and that's what something that motivates you mm. um, and uh, yeah you spend a lot of time um, thereabouts what do you think you need to do to, to get over that hurdle? Do you think there's anything you need to change or is it a matter of just continually turning well, up? Well, I've been thinking about that too, putters. Um, and, you know, in 2020 when I was really close, I feel like I'm a better player now than I was then. But, you know, my ranking's not the same as that. Um, I, I just think it's, you know, if you, if you can have consistent results, which everyone says, you okay, just have consistent results. But I think that is the biggest thing because since the year is so long and we're overseas for so long, you know, having consistent results, I don't think um, I've been having co- better, good enough consistent results to put myself at the top 100. Um, you know, I've had a really good end to the season and I, was, I would say a good start to the season, but the middle half, I don't think I did well enough, you know, during, the, during um, just after Wimbledon, I went and played a lot in clay. Um, so I, I wasn't winning many matches. Um, so I think... I need to do a better schedule next year. I think I need to cut out a few tournaments I did this year and, and, and do a better, smarter schedule. Um, I think what, what Rinky's done has been a really great schedule. He's a he- hell of a player, but I think his scheduling has been great. Um, Maxi, I think, you know, Vooks, all these guys who have pushed us our top 100, they're great tennis players and, they, and they've done a great scheduling. So that, that can help a lot. I think my scheduling hasn't been, hasn't been good enough this year. Um, but I, th- I don't know, players. I think all of us players are all just we've got the, we've got the level, but I don't think we have consistent results throughout the year to 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 have enough points to put us in the top hundred. Um, but you know, it all all comes if you can have a good run at the Slam. You know, in, in those previous previous years, I've been in the main draw of AO, and winning a round can can boost your ranking up a lot. So now, when you when you're in the qualities of Slams, you know it's it's, it's tougher. So now how many points is it for winning a round in a Slam? Yeah, so 45. 45. So, same so as to give somebody an idea, yeah, it's it, it, uh, to win the challenger here, it's 70, or oh, this week's 100K, but you, uh, Normally a lot of the challengers are playing at 75, and um, runner up is 50, so it's pretty much a final of a challenger. In one match. In one so match. So that can, you know, that that's, I mean, making a final of a challenger, you only make a couple times a year. So it, yeah. it, it puts into perspective how tough it is, but. But um, yeah, I think you should keep chipping away. You yeah. Know, but there's, there's there's so many guys who reach the top hundred later later on in their career. Maybe they figure out a few things they need to do better. Um, and I feel like I've been on the tour long enough now, so it's just up to me. I got to have consistent results at challenges, and and I'll be rewarded if I can do that. Yeah, hundred percent, Marky. Mm. I feel like people. Like you realize when you've been on tour for a while how important scheduling is and how important understanding, uh, first of all, what is ideal for you, how many weeks in the row you can handle, yeah. um, how much you want to be uh, chasing just your desired conditions like surface and things like that how, or how much um, you, you know, maybe have the opportunity to play a higher event but it's on a surface that you don't like or and uh so it's tricky. Mm. it is yeah it's very tricky um to i feel like it takes a little bit of trial and error to under to to play the wrong schedule and and as you say watch other guys um the way they go they about it schedule sometimes yeah. and you maybe think hmm, maybe next year i can give that a go you know, yeah. You know? yeah so do you think you'll play less clay next year or i think i'll play less clay next year for sure putters i'll play definitely on the grass <laughs> this year i skipped um, all, pretty much all the grasses I only played Wimbledon qualies and a few days before I played Ilkley but I came from Puerto Rico so I had no no preparation on the grass um, and in the past I've really had good results on grass so yeah. I, I feel like I, I, I stuffed up a little bit there um, and I also think I played too much on clay after Wimbledon I should have maybe had a reset a little bit had a break and then attacked the, the American swing and then the Asian swing after a bit more fresh mentally um, so I think I'll make a few adjustments with that next year. 
putters, but um, you know, also there's not that many tournaments in Australia, so it's it's pretty tricky to figure out where you'd prefer to you know prefer to play. Um, but I think I'll st- stick more to the hard course next year and and definitely try play more on the grass. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Sounds good, good man. Yeah, back your game on grass big time. You're super comfortable on it. You've had some good results, as you say. So, and it, as you mentioned, being from Australia, it can be difficult because I felt this year, this year, looking back on the schedule, I've played a massive schedule, and part of it is a factor of um, I'm so far away from home, being in Europe or America. I think, well, I kind of want to reset, but it's a long way to go home, and it's a lot of money to go it's home and reset. Well. Mm. So you can get stuck a little bit just keep Stay going and you road. can think okay i'll just not and also when you get anxious for results you think oh i don't want to have a training block i want to get results so i want yeah, to keep yeah. playing and mm. then you can cook yourself a little bit um i found that oh, so looking man. back on this year i'd, I'd probably going to play a slight maybe slightly less tournaments that next year and maybe go home one or two times more i've been home I like agree. two weeks since christmas but it's just hard to it's hard to manage being from being from Aussie eh? because you yeah you um you got a long way to go to get back and then you got to adjust from the time zone. The and, jet and lag. Jet no. lag. Jet but I, I know one cool. person that would be happy if you made a few more trips back. Hey. <laughs> we, we, we both love being on the tour putters, so <laughs> other people would like us home too. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, great, man. So how uh, growing up, how much... We talk about clay court tennis. There's always a big thing. The last dude I had on the podcast with this coach, right? Uh, uh, Dobbs, he he, um, he was... Uh, he's Serbian-Australian and he's mm. um, spent a lot of time in Eastern Europe and we are speaking a bit about how important it is or if it is important for juniors, especially um, Australian juniors, to be able to get more time on clay. For you personally, what is it? What is, have you felt like it has? Uh, how much time did you spend on clay growing up, and did you feel like that had a big benefit to your game, or did you feel like it, it wasn't necessary? Well, um, when I was a bit younger, putters, I did like training on clay, but just mainly for the for this for my body because um, you know I didn't want to get any injuries, and at that time there was a lot of kids my age in the National Academy who were training, you know, five days in a row on the hard courts and they were having knee issues, back issues, hip issues at 15, 16 years old. So thankfully my parents, you know, they were, they had a little bit of, you know, they, I mean, they just thought that if I mix up my training a little bit on the hard and the clay, it would help um, for my body, but it also really helped my game. You know, I started, you know, playing with more shape with my forehand um, and um, also helped me develop my drop shot on the clay. Um, so I think it's it's good for juniors to try go half and half on the hardcore and the clay because not only can it be good for their body for their joints, but also good for you know developing other skills in their game, and you know making them find find other ways to win points, not just with a big serve or you know a big flat ground stroke. So I'm 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 happy I, I you know I spend a lot of time on on clay as well as on hardcore. Um, how many like percentage wise how much were you on clay two days two days two two days not not really three days i'd mainly train on the hard court but you know on a wednesday or saturday i'll train on the clay just to change it up like that random day yeah yeah, random days throughout the week um when i'd have my private coach john mccurdy would give me two sessions a week and i'd always hit hit on the clay with him yeah um and he was a big fan of the spanish drills so so he wanted to do in the clay so yeah epic Yeah. Yeah. yeah No, there's there's definitely something to it. It's um yeah I did, I played uh, I developed droppies somehow just out of lack of weapons, not out of clay court tennis. <laughs> but um, it is awesome to be able to to develop lack point construction and patience and yeah, physicality. I feel yeah. like you just you can't get away from being lazy, you know, with your footwork and everything. Correct. And, yeah. Um, and uh, I feel like there is also there is a benefit for the Australian hard courts being quite slow for that matter, and sure. also Aussie Open balls being quite slow That's because true, yeah. like when I've gone and played in America now, it's yeah it's a lot more lively. Quicker so it's, there. yeah, it's not as much um, like you can get away with one two tennis mm. tennis, and you can see that in the players that have developed as well. It's a little bit less so nowadays, but the old older the two thousands two thousand and ten American players serve and forehand huge forehands yeah. and serve yeah yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one because people always chat about it, but it's uh, it's interesting to see. Like, mm. I can see like Max. He probably spent shit all time on clay. 
and you can see how his game's developed. Players, yeah. And he's, but he's, a, he's never going to be a crack court specialist. But he is a specialist at the way he plays, and it can be Correct. super unorthodox for guys that have grown up playing against clay quarters when he's dinking forehands, you know, and and he'd be perfect on grass and, as well. Yeah, you know? I think you said he's played a lot on sin grass when he was younger. So yeah, you can, you can see. You know? Yeah, for sure. So I think there is also a benefit to not everybody has to be developed as a dirt baller, you know, like Definitely that not. because yeah. yeah, you can um yeah, you can you can have a lot of success having a unique game like Max. And great example. game on other surfaces yeah. too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um so you've played all four Grand Slam singles, main draw. Uh impressively you've advanced to the second round of Aussie Open and French, am I right? And Wimby. And Wimby. And Wimby. No oh, wait, so yeah. only US you haven't won. Only US and a lot that of the five setter. Now. Lost in five sets to Giron, huh? To Giron. I remember watching that on some crappy stream. Mate. Uh, I was at training or something. I yeah. had him. I was up two sets to one. Yeah. Um, and I'd never cramped in my life before that, before that match. No way. Um, it was my first match because it, it was during the COVID year. Yeah. So how long, how long it was, it was something crazy. It was my first match in six or seven months. Yeah. Because um, I didn't get into the, the, the qualities of the, the leading event the week before. Yeah. Um, so it was my first match. I was so nervous. I was like, "Mate, I'm playing in the main draw." Of my so you first got the reciprocal wild card that year. For I, I got in yeah. I, with my ranking. Oh, you got the, in. The, the, there was no qualities for um, ah, for singles, yeah. and I was 116. So the cut was uh, uh, 124. Ah, or something. wow! So yeah. I was quite fortunate. I was yeah. pumped. I was like, "Mate, this doesn't happen very often." Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the, the, they had a leading event for all the top 100 players, but I, I, I wasn't inside, so I didn't make the cut for that event. So I was like, okay. First ever main draw US Open. First match in, honestly, it was like seven or eight months because the, there was no tournaments. Um, and yeah, I was up two sets to one. And, and unfortunately, the nerves before the match, I think, caught up with me because yep. I was like, man. Anyway, doesn't matter. Anyway, man, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah it's funny how ner nerves can play. Every play such a big part in cramping. Every time I've cramped, it's been so nerves, much tension involved. Mm. But so second round of, of, the, of the other three. Epic. What's your most memorable slam match so far? Yeah, I've, I think um, the match, my first ever win, my Grand Slam first ever win was against Kukushkin in five sets. Oh, I yeah, think that's got to be, that's that's that gotta be my epic. favorite. Yep. Um, but uh, I, I would say also winning um, my first round, the French. Um, I was super pumped with that because I, I was lucky loser. Lost the last round of qualities. Oh, really? Lost oh, the last true. round of qualities and I was shattered. To? I uh, lost to Liam Brody, yeah, seven six six four, and I thought, oh, man, I'm out of the tournament. Got the news that I was a lucky loser. There were, there were two out of three, and I got the I got the second one, um, and drew Hugo Humbert from yeah. from France. I was like, oh, okay, he's he was 27 or 28 in the world at this stage. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, one in one in four sets. No way, that's epic. That I remember yeah. that. I didn't realize he was that high already when you beat him. Yeah, yeah that's a. That's oh, Kukushkin a is my favorite one. Epic. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I I didn't see the Humber one, but I, I remember watching the Kukushkin one. That was an absolute battle. What was the yeah. score? Six four in the fifth. Four in the fifth. Yeah. I was down. I was up two sets, and then got back, and I was down four two in the fifth, and I uh, was able to scrape through. Yeah, yeah, epic, dude. Yeah. So when you were younger, you played uh, a couple of um, you had a couple of deep runs in the Aussie Open doubles. You played, you had, a, you made a quarters with wit. Am I right? Made semis with wit semis and quarters with, wit. The, with with the duck. Quarters yeah. with duck, semis with wit. How old were you when you made semis with wit? I was twenty one. Yeah. at that stage, putters. Yeah, it was my f it was my second or my first AO, um, and yeah, it's just just so pumped to be playing. So I didn't really think about. Uh, you know, going so deep in the tournament, um, and me and Wit, you know, we we gelled pretty well. He had a unreal serve, um, and I was trying to make as many returns as I could. So we made a sneaky little dubs combo that week. Yeah, he was a good um, dubs player, right? Jeez. You no, know, no, Wit could, you know, he could do a lot of good things in the dubs court. Um, and yeah, we made a, made a good run to the semis. But yeah. yeah, I'm surprised Wit hung him up so early. Like, so he was at like 150 yeah. singles as well, right? Yeah, he, he was got high. he was bloody good. Like, but yeah. I think he had some issues with his hips, and True. and I think yeah, I don't know if 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 yeah, maybe it was the it was a signing factor for his for his tennis. Yeah, putters, yeah. Did that? Did having those deep runs and being like in a quarter final, a semi final, a slam, and doubles, did that did, did that confidence translate to singles at all, or is it completely different? It was it was it was tricky because at that stage I was mainly trying to focus on my on my singles. You know, I was I was only twenty one. I was young. I was I wanted to you know grow my singles ranking. I was only in the 
two, two, two 20s or two 40s mark at that stage. Partner. So that was my main focus. I didn't play much doubles throughout the rest of that year, even though I got to 75 in, 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 the, in the rankings after that AO run. Um, so if I had my time over again, I would have played more dubs to maybe try to sustain my ranking for the following year. Um, but I, th I think it, de it definitely helped me. I mean, the, the nerves were there in the, in the quarters and in the semis. So that definitely helped me for my later years in, in the singles in the Grand Slams. So yeah, no, the doubles, the doubles um, can really simulate the same, you know, the pressure situations onto the singles court. Mm. Yeah, just a factor of, I mean, it just a factor of the, that it was such a big tournament. You're playing home Grand Slam, going deep. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. Um, mm. What else have I got for you here? Uh, <laughs> I was chatting with Omar uh, oh, yeah. the other, and I, was, I, was, I was telling him that I was going to do a potty with you yeah. and um, we laughed about the rumours of you sleeping in wristbands and a match outfit so you're ready for war when you wake up can you confirm oh. can you confirm that this is true <laughs> well it's definitely and true but I can tell you why it's true <laughs> tell me why because um, you know I was waking up for training to go you know to school you know, to train at 6.30 in the morning. So I was like, man, I might as well get extra 15, 20 minutes of, of sleep and just go to bed in my, go to bed in my clothes, wristband, everything, jump out of bed, straight into the car, straight <laughs> to training and straight to school. So that was the only reason. Um, but, uh, you know, when I, was, when I was younger, in the under 12 days, I'd have my lucky shirt that, that I'd play the, the matches in. What, what shirt was it? Just a, just a random shirt that I would win most of my of the matches throughout the so tournament. You'd, so in. you'd bring it out for big matches or you'd wear it so every I'd day? So I'd save it. I'd save the, the shirt for a semi or a final. <laughs> and if I won my semi, I'd definitely wear it for the yeah. final. Um, but I had some funny little superstitions when I was, you know, yeah. as a little, little youngster, you do some weird things. Um, but no, I did. Uh, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how that got out, by the way, putters. But uh, that is a funny. That is a <laughs> oh, funny before story. I knew you well, I remember hearing that story, and I was laughed, and I was like, "Wow, he loves it so much." Yeah, yeah. Uh, double wristbands. Cool. I don't know why I slept with those with those two on. Mate, when you love when just, you love it, you love it. Mate, that's I used to it. have serious sweating problems, so yeah. I had to have those things on all the time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So did you go to? Did you um, go to school in high school? Uh, uh, like it. Um, attend at school or did you do home distance ed so you could travel a lot or what? yeah I did distance ed at, at, at TA Putters so that was from what age from 16 to to no no what from, from 15 to yeah 18 19 yeah um, I didn't finish year 12 I just at that stage I was already pretty set that I wanted to go yeah. pro with my tennis <laughs> so I, was, I said so you know yeah we'll, we'll scrap the rest I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just I'm just heading to the to the ten, to the tennis yeah um so yeah I didn't um focus much on my on my on my schooling um after that but as I just went full-time tennis um and uh yeah but you know, everyone has different different routes um but I'm, I'm very happy that I did homeschooling because that allowed me to you know train more play more travel and play tournaments um where at a normal school i don't think they allow you to be gone for you know six months of the year as a youngster so so but yeah everyone has their own ways of doing it. i think at that stage um i was getting a few um colleges were reaching out to me to, to, to yeah. come and play college tennis at that stage i wasn't thinking about it i just wanted to go pro as soon as possible and expose myself to the to the you know the, the pro tennis scene um but you know if I had my time over again, I wouldn't have, wouldn't mind doing a, a, a season at college. It was uh, also a bit like even, I mean, you're a bit younger than me, but it was also uh, marketed and a bit differently. And I don't think the college platform was as good as it is now. It now, now it's unbelievable. Like not only the whole college system to make you or help you become a better tennis player, but also mm. now you have the spots in futures and challenges can be huge you can yeah. go like mate like this guy that's here andreas martin you know he's 800 that's or whatever but he's getting main draw off his college ranking yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, i mean i feel like college has really improved over the years especially the the, the level and and how players are going pro straight after their, their college experience um so yeah i think i think there's definitely an avenue for players to take these days players if, they, if they're still serious about their tennis yeah. especially if they go there with the right attitude yeah, there's a couple um, different ways to go about it. You can go there, and it can be a means to the end, or you can go there as a springboard. So eh? Which, yeah, whichever way you want to, you know, do it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it would have been a good environment for us players. I would would have liked to have you and my team. We would have gone to war and <laughs> on a dubs court. That would have been epic. Uh, so yeah. that would have been sick. But uh, yeah, 
maybe in another lifetime. But yeah. yeah, yeah, all good. And so looking back at your career, um, are there any like are there any coaches that really stood out that ha- had a had a um, I mean I know you had a lo- you've had a lot of good coaches in your career, but is anyone that stood out that had a really uh, big impact on you? Um, I know um, definitely from a, from when I first came to Australia, um, putters John McCurdy, he reached out to me, um, to my parents, and said, "Look, I would like to coach your son, me." Um, and he really drilled a, a mindset into me. I feel when I was younger because he was a bit old school, yeah. uh, coaching his style. Um, but he also went to Spain to coach for many years, so he kind of brought back a li- to Australia a bit of the way. The, the, the young Spanish boys trained um, and he'd always tell me how hard their work ethic was so they always gave me motivation as, yeah. as a youngster to be like man I'm, I'm, you know Mac is telling me these stories of these young kids putting the work so I feel like he really gave me a good um, you know gave me a good mindset from a young age to really put in the work when you're on the court um, and then later on in my junior days when I was with Luch I felt like he was he was a, a, a huge a huge part for my development part is um because i feel like you know luch was was just someone who just also said to me like enjoy you know enjoy enjoy fighting enjoy competing you win or lose just compete you know he made it simple for me so i, I like that i like that about luch and and he always put a lot of work into me and and, and improve improve me from a young age so those two coaches definitely stand out obviously there's plenty of other coaches who have helped me um but yeah. those two guys have really i feel like they shape me into the in, into the play and and the, and the mindset I, I bring to the tennis court thanks to those two. Uh, yeah, wonderful coaches. man. I can see that. And I, yeah, Luch, um, yeah, Luch is an unbelievable dude. He was I I don't even know him that well, but from the times I have met him and chatted with him, he was very inspirational and yeah. very humble and and he's just looking to help even put, you know he would give me some advice even though he was he was working with you and Moddy at the time or something like that. He was it's he's a great dude. guy. Yeah. Um, do you watch a lot of tennis outside of playing, even nowadays? Um, yeah, uh, I really do enjoy watching the you know the top guys play. I love watching the challenger matches. I love watching the highlights. I'm I'm sure yeah. the same as you, but as we all you know, we live and breathe tennis, um, and it's just it's just my hobby. I like to you know see how, what the top guys are doing, um, especially the. the what the the London finals just that just passed for me that's one of my favorite events to watch just because the the, the tennis quality is so high and you know it's, it's great to see those guys out there what they're doing you know if is their their core positioning um, the way they handle the big moments there's always something I can I try to you know learn from them um, but at the same time I just love watching the challenger matches um, I love watching yourself play I love watching all the Aussie boys play so I can you know I can always you know know what happened in the matches um but uh yeah just don't uh just ask my girlfriend but she will <laughs> she will let you know if i like watching tennis off the court and she'll probably say a little bit too much yeah it's a funny one eh? i remember talking about that the other night um i uh i, I haven't been i'm not graced with a girlfriend at the moment but um in the times i have had there was always a tricky one when uh she would be saying, well, you're lucky, you know, Jan is actually at a tennis background. She's, got, she's played, she's had brothers that have played. So yeah. at least she knows it well. Whereas my girlfriends had not, knew nothing about tennis. And if I was training all day and then coming or coaching as well, whatever, and coming home and then one of them <laughs> flick a match on in, in bed. Or like, oh, that'd be great. But you, uh, you know, you're getting a mouthful. Was, oh man. Yeah. You gotta, I was like, is this match worth the argument or should I, what's the score? I'll wait till five, four, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny one. Yeah, it's funny. But then I think also um, I've noticed this myself, just with this whole social media landscape and YouTube and everything, Tennis TV putting together highlight packages. I always um, try to promote kids to watch full matches because That's if true. you just watch on highlights, like oh, highlights are great and entertaining, and obviously entertaining, it's a sick mainly. way. To, it's a sick yeah. way to watch a match in five minutes. But then you can, I, I also found that you can just think the guys are absolute gods and you don't see how they go with f- first point of the match, serve, first ball error. Well, how do they react? What's Correct. their shot selection how they deal on with the first the, ball and the next point, miss, you know? Miss shots on break points. You know, often they do go for a shot and they still miss. Yeah. How else you don't see that, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just watch it. Yeah, if watching closely their, their um, mannerisms and just the way they go about matches i try and every time i'm at challenges as well just sit and sit through one or two full Watch matches yeah, obviously yeah. if as australians i'm always um 
what, if it, as long as it's not messing with my schedule, I'll try and uh, I'll try and get behind him and watch a lot of them. Mm. Like Omar this week, he's had nobody here, so I was trying to make a point to be there for every one of his matches. Oh, I'm usually doing good. that with Dano as well, and always try and um, uh, yeah. Try to get the boys over the line. Yeah, because it it's helps so easy. much yeah. when you've got someone in the corner, even if they're not, since it doesn't matter what they're saying, what they're doing, but just, just watching, yeah. So, someone to look at, you know, it's it, it's a nice Agreed. feeling, yeah. Um, uh, Marky, so just before we started this, I posted on Instagram for this anyone that's got any questions for you, and I just got a couple of questions from somebody. Um, where, did I, where did I have this now? I think there were some rash ones, but let me see if, <laughs> let's it, hear it, let me let's see if there's anything worth Not too rash, but let's, let's see what you got for me. Uh, um, firstly, we kind of touched on this, but uh, do you set goals for 2024? What are your aspirations? Do you set ranking goals for next year or results goals? Or is it just... I don't, I don't set uh, ranking goals, but as obviously I want to get inside the top hundred. Yeah. But I don't, I, you know, I don't want to put, you know, ranking uh, goals on myself. I just want to perform well, um, as as often and as you know, I want to be having consistent results at challenges. So I just, I, that's my main goal. I want to show up each week. Yeah. Um, I know it's not always possible to show up each week, but I want to be mentally there. I want to be physically fresh to give myself the best opportunity to do well. Because I know if I tick those boxes, then that, that's going to lead to where I'm trying to get to. Yeah. So I don't really set uh, any ranking goals. Um, but I want to stay I want to stay healthy. That, that's a big goal for me um, because I can have a tendency to over you know, overplay. I've played 34 tournaments this year. It's the I was going to ask you, anyway, 34. It's the most I've ever played. So I think I need to you know tone it back a little bit for next year um, and um, have a bit more, you know, break for my body and then maybe that might translate into having some better weeks if, if my body's a bit more fresher you know um going deeper into tournaments can can you know depend if your body's feeling up to it or not you know yeah so that's so yeah no i don't have any uh, ranking okay. goals next year, but yeah the the ranking is a byproduct of of everything else right you're not yeah like i have the same thing i really want to crack top 100 next year doubles but um, instead of thinking about that, it's a yeah. case of thinking, what do I actually need this to get week, better at? You know, you focus know? on this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, exactly. And why? What I need to do, um, like specifically to become a better player, and then results will follow from Correct. that stuff. That's how I won't look That's at good. it. That's good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's another one asking who is on your team and how can they aid achieving those. We've discussed that. You've had yeah, Greg on your team. Um, oh, this one says, what's the plan with his brother's career? We see him, well, Greg doesn't play anymore, right? He's there to, no. to coach you, although he still hits the ball freaking clean. <laughs> As I, I still call him Delpo sometimes because he's got yeah. the laid back wrist. And, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, Greg still hits hits regularly with me, but as he trains yeah. with me each each day when we're home. Um yeah, unfortunately for Greg, he went to, to 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 college, but that was when COVID hit. So instead of you know pursuing and staying at college, he decided to come back to Australia. Um, but you know, I'm I'm happy he did that because now I can have him on the road with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I do sometimes wish I uh, I could uh, he could give me his forehand. I could just freaking just yeah. just tonk a few around. Yeah, he's smooth, eh? <laughs> Love it. Um, what will you do after you retire from tennis? Have you had any thought process behind that? Um, let's say you make, let's say, let's say money's uh, not an issue and you've made a lot of money from tennis and you're 40 and you're retired. What do you think you'd do? Well, we've got to do something, but it's not going to just sit back and do nothing. Just lock into ping pong. <laughs> oh, that, that does sound nice. Um, but I, I, I still want to be involved with, with the, with the tennis scene in some way, but as I yeah. want to be, um, I want to be coaching. I want to be trying to help uh, the next the next uh, generation of players try to get you know to the top hundred. I want to do a, a similar to what Luch did with me. You know, yeah. he coached me from a young age, um, and and but I want to you know I want to I want to stay involved with tennis. Um, I'm always gonna always gonna love tennis. Like like I'm sure you always gonna love tennis, but as I'm always gonna watch tennis. Um, let's just hope um, you know my my future wife allows me to do these sort of things. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would love to still be involved with tennis. Um, but, you know, maybe do something else as well. Maybe yep. uh, have a look have a look around Australia. I would like to do, 
you know, go go camping around Australia. That that's that's something that would be out of my comfort zone. So I want to do something different. Um, but I don't think I'm ever going to be separated from tennis. That's just what's been in my family over the over since I was young. Um, and uh, yeah, I just like tracking people's journeys and seeing how far I can go in tennis. Epic man, sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'm much the same. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to do a lap around Australia in a bus one day, even if I have young kids. Sick, I'd love yeah. to do that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but definitely gonna um, stay in tennis or give back as give well. Back. And, that's, that's and a good um, way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, and just uh, also um, change anything that you think can change in the sport. So it motivates me a little bit. I just think about how. Yeah, how how epic tennis has been for me. And tennis trips have been even as a, as a youngster going with the crew, and you just learn so much about yourself. It gives you a lot, tennis. Yeah, eh? like does a, give lot you a lot of nice experiences, meet new people, a lot of things. So. There's a question here that says, "How can we make Australian tennis as good as it used to be?" I kind of hate this question because Australian tennis is unbelievable right now on, the, on, the, on the men's side. Yeah. We have like 10 in the top 100. Yeah. We it's have, actually you, it, very it's good. actually scary good. I think we have, we had like second most in the top 100 right now. Really? Yeah. And uh, although we don't have, you could say Demon's the only one that's potentially pushing for a slam. Well, obviously, Kiggs, if he's healthy, but although we don't have like a um, massive contingency in the top, top level, uh, you have to give. Australian players some credit right now it's on uh, on the men's side where we're in it's un- unbelievable there is there's a, there's a lot of depth um, you got guys yeah like like Oaks and Tomo and Poprin and Vuk and Rinks Maxie, and, and Rinky. Max is 40 in the world and like it's it's really good I mean, I mean yeah I don't think that that yeah that's not a nice thing to say I don't think but I feel like um you know that the the past generation was so was so bloody good. It's very tough to com- very tough, tough to emulate that. Yeah, and it just it's not it's not as uh, it's more of an international sport now. There's more countries playing and everything like that. And yeah, it's uh, um, it was uh, it was much more of like a f- America and Australia Correct. sort of sport back then. Man, the level has of. gone up so much over the years, but as I remember when I first came to the Challenger scene compared to now. I mean, the tennis has increased so much over the last five years. The level, the depth, um, so many more players are playing. Everyone can play such good level and they rank three, four hundred, which back in the day you'd think playing a son rank three, four hundred, okay, I'm a good chance to win this match today. But you have to be on because those guys can seriously play now. Yeah. Like, like top 200 players and then top 200 players are pushing guys top 100, so... Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think the de- the depth is unreal. I think just how professional guys are that are that are you know at sort of two, three, four, five hundred. Like there's guys yeah, no, that are that are really bat. dedicated and yeah. that are putting in and that. And I feel like physically as well, people are guys are just unbelievable athletes, and it's such a pre prerequisite now. You have to be ticking a lot you of boxes. Have to tick that box. yeah, 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 of course. It's yeah. True. yeah it's true. So, Marky, who are you playing tomorrow? I'm playing against a um, a Turkish guy, um, Moez. I don't know, really know how to pronounce yeah. his surname. I don't know. Help either. me if I no, was, I uh, I'm not even. I'm, I can see the name, but I can't pronounce yeah. it very well. Um, so we'll lock horns tomorrow and have yep. a battle. So last event of the year, I'll be playing. Oh, so we're both playing tomorrow. Let's ready to lock in. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, dude. It was awesome to. Um, I know we're te- I was teasing you for this for a bit, but yeah, awesome no. to sit down and have a chat with you and hear it and all the awesome, all the great things you got to say and. And uh, yeah, I'm, I uh, I know I've said this before, but I'll I'll say it again. I I'm a I'm a massive believer in your tennis, and I look Thanks, forward brothers. to seeing you perched not only in top hundred but higher than that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm backing you, and hopefully I'll keep uh, going. And I'll let's play. We'll play doubles at Aussie Open Sounds one day good. if I can get there. Lock right? it in. I'm off. Cheers, digger. Thanks, Butters. Enjoyed Thank it. Cheers. Yeah.